यशंदसाशभो विश्वूपम छंद्योद्योमृत संभूवा समेन्द्रो मेधया स्पृणत अमृत सदेवधारणो भूयास शरीर मे विचर्शन जीवा मे मधुमात्म कर्णाभ्यं भूरीवेश्रुव ब्रह्म न कोशोसी मेधया पिहित श्रुत मे गोपा ओं शाति 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 उपनिषद मे ब्रह्मन हु इज द फोरमोस्ट ऑफ द वैदिक हिम्स हु एस्यूम्स ऑल फॉर्म्स हु एज ए स्प्रंग फ्रॉम द मॉटल हिम्स ऑफ द वेदस मे द लॉर्ड चेयर मी विद विजडम मेधा O oh God, may I be the possessor of immortality. May my body be competent to acquire self-knowledge. May my tongue be exceedingly sweet. May I hear abundantly with my ears. Thou, Om, or the Shi, the Brahman, concealed by worldly intelligence, guard for me what I have learned. Om peace 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 be unto all this morning our subject is stories of vedanta monks part 35 as you know it is a series of lectures based on the reminiscences of the second generation monks of the ramakrishna order who are the disciples of brahmananda vivekananda sharadananda holy mother and others before i begin my lecture i shall tell you a little story which will tell us the value of holy company it is a it is an indian folklore <coughs> a holy man <coughs> visited a village and came they have a village temple where he wanted to stay for a few days so the villagers came and gave food to that holy man who gave them spiritual discourses in the evening all villagers left so this holy man was alone meditating all of a sudden through darkness a man came and bowed down to the holy man the holy man asked who are you he straight said i am a thief thief chor the holy man was a little puzzled a thief has come then is the holy man said you have come to me but i have nothing to nothing what will you steal from me well i have not come to steal anything from you i have come for an advice for a boon tell me what you want this is stealing is my profession i have wife children i am very poor i want a boon from you that when i steal i will not be caught or i will not be punished Holy man said, "My goodness, I have never heard such thing." 
you st you steal other things and you will not be caught and you will not be punished. Then the holy man stopped thinking and then he said, well, let me tell you. Your prayer will be granted on condition. You will, you, you will have to speak the truth. You will never deviate from the truth. All right. The man, the thief left. Next night, he went to steal the treasury of the king. He, he heard that there are three precious jewels are there. So when he went there at midnight, he found another man was roaming around that place. So the thief asked, who are you? Well, I am a thief. Oh, then you are my friend. You see, there are some three, there are three jewels are in this treasury. I have come to steal them. The other thief says, I shall help you. I know what those things are. But on condition, you will have to give half to me. All right? So he shows the other fellow showed how to get in. So he went there and he found only three precious jewels are there. So he was thinking, if I take three, then it will be hard to divide. So let me take two and leave one. So he took two and came out from the treasury. <coughs> he gave one to the other person and the one he took. And before he was leaving, the other person asked, tell me your address. So he spoke the truth, he gave the address and left home. Early in the morning, police surrounded his house and arrested him and took him to the king. King said, did you steal anything from the king's palace? King's treasury? Well, yes. What did you steal? Then he showed, this is the jewel I got it from there. What else did you get? Well, I got another, but I gave to my partner, but I don't know who he is. Then the king called his minister, could you go and check the treasury? What are the things are there? So minister went and took one jewel and put it in his pocket and came back to the court and told the king that there was nothing. Then the king said, well, he asked his bodyguard, could you search this, this minister, whether he has the jewel or not, they found that it is in his pocket. He lied. Then the king told, disclosed the whole story, that I was the partner, and this man came to steal, I showed him the way, he stole two, one he gave to me, another he took himself. So he spoke the truth. Then, in the meantime, the holy power man came and this thief fell at his feet and said, Master, I want to renounce everything. I want to be your disciple. I shall not steal anything. I shall just, I want to be a monk. So his whole mind was changed because he practiced the truth. It is a beautiful folklore. The king disclosed the whole story. Similar story, we find that Pauhari Baba, whom Swami Vivekananda met. I visited in Gazipur, Pauhari Baba's ashrama three, four times. It's a beautiful place. Pauhari Baba was in his room meditating at night. A thief entered and collected some of the Pauhari Baba's 
things and put it in a cloth and made a bundle and he was, when he was about to run away, Pavari Baba got up. And seeing him, the thief ran and Pavari Baba took the bundle and chased him. The thief ran, ran, ran and fell and exhausted. Pavari Baba caught him and said, please don't hand over me to the police. Pavari Baba, no, 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 no. You collected these things from me. Please, I have, I have come to give back to you. Please take these things. That man fell at Pavari Baba's feet and said, I shall never do these things anymore. I want to be a disciple. That man became a monk. I think Swami Avedananda met the thief monk in Rishikesh in 1890s or something like that. I'm just telling you that how holy company can change a person's life transformation. That comes from the company of the holy. When we read the stories of the disciples and the householder this devotees of Sri Ramakrishna, we find they came to Sri Ramakrishna, how their lives were transformed by the holy touch, by the divine touch of Sri Ramakrishna. Holy company is very, very important and vital in a spiritual life. That I wanted to tell you. So today I shall <coughs> tell you the reminiscences of Swami Vishuddhananda by Swami Pavitrananda. who was the head of the, Vedanta, head of the Vedanta Society of New York. I knew both the Swamis. I met Swami Vishuddhananda in 1960. He died in 1962. Three years off and on I met him, but I had no opportunity to talk to him. He was vice president at that time. Then he became president for three, four months and passed away in June 1962. I still remember. A great Swami. And Pavitrananda Ji, of course, I knew him from 1971 to 77 till he died. Every summer he used to come to Hollywood. I was then in Hollywood, 71 to 78. He used to, he was in the next room to my room, and at night we used to talk many things about his spiritual life. Great Swami. He was a Brahmananda's disciple. <coughs> and Vishuddhananda Ji was born in 1883. His parents died when he was very young. He was raised by his grandmother. Then in 1901, he graduated from the school. Then he was searching, searching something about his spiritual life. He went to Imperial Library in Calcutta. It is in the north side of the planet at that time. And the director of the library, an Englishman, used to talk to him. Then in the library, in the, in the book shelves, he found a book, Ramakrishna, and his teach and his sayings, Sri Ramakrishna and his sayings by Professor Max Muller. So he opened that book and found the name of Ramakrishna and the brief life story of Ramakrishna, and he lived in Dakshineshwar. So he was very curious. He went to Dakshineshwar and met Ramlal Dada, Sri Ramakrishna's nephew. Then 2001 to 2003, he practiced sadhana in Dakshineshwar. He used to go from home whole day there, or night time, he used to stay there. Then, in 2006, sorry, 1906, he went to Jairambati and got initiation from Holy Mother. Then he again went to Jairambati with his two friends and the Holy Mother gave them wokar cloth, and they walked 500 miles. It took them three months from 
ጃራን ባጨቱ ዳነረስ ወራኖሽ ዲአር ዲአር ስፒሪቹዋል ላይፍ ሳጨት ዴቱ ኳን ፋፍ ኮማ ፋየር ኮንዳክተድ ባይ ሻሚ ሺባኖንዶ አንጂ ዴንሲን ኢቢ ከመና ቸንጀት ውሸት ታካባውት ቸንጀንታ ብራማኖንዶ አንጂ in 1920s he became a trustee of belun mot in 1947 he became the vice president of the ramkrishna hotel then in 1962 he became the president and he passed away that is shown bishop dhananda's short biographical sketch he did not give any public lectures he used to only talk he initiated and he gave his spiritual discourses to the devotees those who would come to him he did two things he gave peace and bliss in the hearts of the people and framed their character help them to build the spiritual life it is the life in his past life <coughs> holy company when i think about holy company i think the far place of the midwest cold midwest when we near the fire we get heat and that heat give us comfort and that fire place gives us light the blazing fire we really enjoy fire heat the far away when we are far away from that fire place we get cool we see darkness similarly holy company gives us comfort and joy comfort and joy and it illumines our hearts that is the value of the holy company but sometimes holy company we do not get holy monks or holy saints in our house but we can have holy company through holy books holy places pilgrimages this holy association is very very important i sometimes ask people you know have some books which will give you holy company i was thinking you know those who want the company of sri ramakrishna i suggest some books which will really really give you holy company <coughs> gospel of sri ramakrishna ramakrishna is divine play <coughs> ram krishna do you saw him <coughs> they live with god god lived with them then how to live with god in the company of ram krishna see god with open eyes these books will definitely give you ram krishna's company you will feel that you are living with the master they will help ishaisya parama gotihi ishaisya parama sampad ishaisya parama loka ita ishaisya parama ananda ita isya ananda isya nani bhutani matra ni upajivanti brother nagunisha says this holy company this god is our goal goti goti means goal shampat this spiritual spirit brahman god is the, our real wealth treasure paramaloka which is the supreme abode where we want to live we want to taste peace and bliss of the spiritual life 
Ishu is a Paramananda. This is the supreme bliss. Having this bliss, human beings can live in this world with joy. That is the result of holy company. Now I shall start our reminiscences of Swami Pavitra Nanda. Reminiscences of Vishuddhananda by Swami Pavitra Nanda. This reminiscences was published when Vishuddhananda just passed away in 1922. Sorry, 1962. Swami Pavitrananda Ji writes, So far my memory goes, I met Swami Vishuddhananda Ji in 1924 in Madras. I was transferred there. And I was uh, just new, but I saw a senior Swami, Swami Vishuddhananda Ji, was heating water in outside, in an oven. Woodburn oven. The Swami looked at me and said, it is winter, I am making some hot water. It would be sufficient for you also. You can have some water from me. I just overwhelmed that such a senior great Swami was thinking of me, my welfare. This is the thing we learn from the senior Swamis. Feeling, do you feel for others? That is the first sign of the spiritual growth. Feeling for others. That will knock out your selfishness. Pavitrananda Ji writes that I heard from a monk when Swami Vishuddhananda, sorry, Swami Brahmananda sent Vishuddhananda to Madras, I think to Ramakrishnananda. And he wrote to him, here is a person, here is a monk who thinks of God all the time. Ekjan sadhu pathachi se sarbakkan bhagavane chintai vibhur. I am sending a monk to you who is absorbed in God all the time. That is the credential Swami Vishuddhananda got from Swami Brahmananda. Most of the time he was in his own mood, but he was, he used to talk to others also, and always talked about his spiritual things. And while talking, he emphasized on devotion more than knowledge. He did not care for too much debating on the philosophy and discussion and intellectual things. His mind tasted God. You see, some we know some great Pongis, very intellectual, quoting the scriptures, they, they will... But they are living in the intellectual plane. They could, do not, cannot enter the spiritual plane. But these people are in the spiritual plane. So Swami Pavitrananda Ji had a knack to discuss things and, you know, decide this and that, and he, 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 loved, he loved to argue. Then Swami, he said, do you know what, in, in Vedanta tradition, there are three ways you can argue. The first way is called Bada. Bada means guru and disciple, they discuss to ascertain the truth. Question and answer, question and answer, back and forth, back and forth. That is called bada. Bada is good. Sometimes you know some things, but, but for the conviction, for the verification, you can ask your guru what it means. Jalpa, jalpa means that person, 
I'm talking with some scholars, Punjits, debaters. They want to conquer the opponent and get victory. They will argue and argue and defeat you, and they are very proud that I defeated that person <laughs> and I won. <laughs> I remember a funny story. When Swami Vivekananda returned from America to India in Alambad and Mott, a great Punjit came to debate with Swamiji. Swamiji was, go, was about to go to the Ganges for bath. Swamiji said, oh, you have come to debate with me? Yes. Because if, they can defeat, if he can defeat Swamiji, then he will be very famous. Swamiji said, do you have paper and pencil? So he gave, Swamiji wrote, I am defeated. Now you go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bada jalpo. And bitanda means mm, he will only show you that your questions are wrong, defective questions. I cannot answer. He can show you 22 loopholes of your questions, 22 nigrostan, according to logic. Anyhow, I shall not go there. <laughs> Kato Upanishad says, Nuisa Tarki na Muti Rapo Neya. Muti means knowledge, knowledge of God. Cannot be achieved through debate, through argument, through discussion. Ochinta Kholu ya Bhavan, ji Bhavan na tan Tarki na Jujait. The thing which is beyond the intellect, you cannot Asserting through the intellect. Through torko means arguments. You cannot ascertain the truth by arguments. It is a thing for experience, for realization. <laughs> Shami Vishuddhananda told Shami. Povitrananda, you know, you are misusing your time and energy talking this way. Practice. Practice makes a person perfect. Shami Pavitranandaji told him, Maharaji, I am arguing in this age. I see some people, some devotional, emotional people, they accept oh, oh, everything you say, they will accept. But I want to accept to be convinced that this is true, the truth. Look at Swamiji. He argues and argues with Sri Ramakrishna. Swamiji told Nivedita, I fought with my guru for six years. As a result, I know every inch of the way in his spiritual life. So that was the way he was trying to talk about spiritual matter. Then Vishuddhananda just told you, no, you have devotion inside. You are outside, you are expressing <laughs> some, something different. <laughs> Then Swami Pavitranda says, if you think that I have devotion inside, I am very fortunate, Maharaj. <laughs> Pavitranda ji could not stay in Madras for a long time. He came to Bengal, then he was transferred to Mayabhuti. In 1930s, early 30s, he became the editor and then became the president of Advaita Ashrama. Then he was a trustee. Then he was transferred to New York in 1951. But in, in 1927, Swami, Swami Vishuddhanandaji started a small center in Ranchi that Swami Pavitranandaji went to see him up at the Howrah station. And he, time to time, he used to go to Ranchi to just to live with Swami Vishuddhanandaji. 
the house was donated by Shottendana Tagore from Tagore's family, a small house, a little area, very poor condition. But Swami Vishuddhananda ji made that ashram like a hermitage. Flowers, trees, very small. And that place, and he did not want too much philanthropic activities from that center. Just sadhana, go deep. He made beautiful flower gardens. He's If you see Belur Mart, how beautifully rearranged. Mayabhuti, Shamlatal. If you see our Vedanta centers in India, you will be seeing very, it's, you can feel that what a beautiful atmosphere. Swami Brahmananda went to Bangalore and found they do not have dopati food which is a kind of flowers, it has various colors, and it blooms like anything. So he collected dopachi seeds from Bengal and took to Bangalore, make the flower garden in the Bangalore ashram. And he found in Bengal, we do not have Nagalingam. So he put Nagalingam seeds and brought it to Belurmat and planted. We have still the Nagulingam tree by the side of the Ganges, next uh, north side of Swami Brahmananda's temple. That is a fantastic, you know, Nagulingam flower. Those we have seen, I have never seen that. Nature can create some uh, unusual flower. It is just like Shivalingam, and it is the hood of the snake. It is beautiful. It's just beautiful. That is a favorite flower of Shiva. So we, that is the way Swami Brahmananda says that every ashrama should be a flowers, fruits, vegetables. They, they must have dairy, dairy. He wanted every center should be self-sufficient. Ashrama should be neat and clean. Cleanliness is next to godliness. In this respect, when I visited Japan, I found how Japanese people make their house just neat. They have a very small, small place, but flowers, these, that, are neat and clean, which is extremely important in the spiritual life. According to Vedanta, Sittam Shivam Sundaram, God is Sittam, truth, Shivam, all are special, Sundaram, beautiful. Beautiful. Your room, your house should be beautiful. Very organized clean. These things we must learn from these holy people that you know, do you know what does it mean? If your outside is clean, that means your inside is clean. <laughs> and if your inside is the clean, outside is the clean. <laughs> if your outside is disorderly, unclean, that means your mind also unclean, disorderly. Whether you're spiritual or not, it must manifest through your life. Look at Sri Ramakrishna. He planted Panchavuti. Asridai that put this tree here, this tree here. He brought Madhavi creeper from Vrindavan and planted in Dakshineshwar. He asked the, the temple, the uh, gardener, to make a fence that the cows will not ruin his panchavuti. Just see, being an incarnation of God, he is looking after the trees and flowers. Wonderful. Swami says that what a good taste of Swami Vishuddhananda had and how he made that Ransi Ashrama his place for sadhana. 
well, I watched him. After morning meditation, when he would come out, I watched his face, so serene, so calm. As if so much joy was manifesting his face. You know, when you go for a shrine, if you had some vision, or if you have deep meditation, that reflects on our faces, that reflects on our eyes. When you are angry, you go and see your face on the mirror, you will see rage and full of anger. With deep meditation, when you have tremendous joy inside, you go and see your face on the mirror, you will see the face is calm, serene, joyful, beautiful. Face is the index of the mind that he was talking about. Day after day, month after month, he dived. He dove deep inside of his being and had many, many, many experiences. But it was four, five hours non-stop meditation it was very natural to him. <laughs> Look at us. One hour, woof, woof, woof. Knee pain, omuk, back pain, knee pain. <laughs> These people are really, really deeply spiritual. Swami Pavitranandaji Ji would visit Ranchi off and on. And he used to stay next to Swami Vishuddhananda's room. But sometimes I saw him that he was seated on his asana, but he was not meditating. But he was deeply thinking something. He was absorbed some kind of thoughts or experience. Sometimes he used to read something, Gita or gospel, or the Upanishad, taking those thoughts, he used to loiter. He used to pace back and forth on the veranda and thinking, thinking. You know, in the spiritual life, don't all this meditation, japa are not necessary. Nature comes, reads something. They call it monon, reflection, smriti, constant recollectedness. That also will bring us deeper experience of the spiritual life. That he was talking about. This is called meditation on the scriptures. Those who are interested can read that book, that see God with open eyes. There we find how many ways one can meditate on God. This hearing, reflecting, and meditating. These are the three ways one can experience Brahman. Sharvana, Manana, Nididhyasana. He loved solitude. Sometimes people would think that he wanted to be alone, but many people on Saturdays and Sundays would come from city to have his company. And he used to share his experiences to them and help them to build their spiritual life. Share. Swami Shantananda told his attendant, you are helping me, you are serving me, repeat mantra all the time. Then this mantra will be the part of your life. Of course, nowadays we have so many advantages, the YouTube and 
and <laughs> Skype, Zoom. There are so many beautiful things that are in YouTube. We can have the company. Though the corona stopped our devotees come to the center, but every Sunday I am spending two hours, one hour maybe lecture, one hour Zoom, question and answer. Not bad. <laughs> Swami Vishuddhananda, while he talked, many of you, he used to mention about Thakur and mothers and Swamiji. He read the Gospel of Ramakrishna, I have I learned 50 times. Almost gospel he got by heart. Anybody would ask some question, he could say, Thakur said this. And he used to shed new light on the words of the Master. He used to read gospel every day and he used to think of all those, think these words of the Master. And he always wanted to learn something new, new things about Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Swamiji. Do you know what, I, what is in my mind? There is a verse in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 11, I think it is 54. Bhakta tu ananya shaikyo vaham evam vidorjunam gyatum drashtum cha tatte na pravishtum cha parantapa. If you have real love, genuine love, devotion for God, that will lead you three, th three things. Three things you will achieve. First, gyatum, you will be able to know God. That knowing is intellectually, intellectual conviction. Gyatum, drushtum, you can see God. You know, day and night, if you think of God in my mind, then you want to look up around you, you will see the divine being in front of you. That is called short bhubhuti brahma darshan, seeing God in every being. Next is probishtum, how we can enter God. That is the most important thing that the Swami used to do. They used to dive deep into the spiritual realm and was saturated with that God consciousness. That is called Prabhishtu. Prabhishtu means God entered inside you and playing through you. That is Prabhishtu. You know, we come to spiritual life, we repeat and repeat mantra and japa and a little meditation, but we do not know this technique, how to enter God. The more you, the, your mind will enter to God, God will immediately enter inside you. This is, I can give you an illustration how it works. I see in Laguna Beach, some children, they make a, with a shovel, you know, plastic shovel, they take the sand out and want to make a big pond. All of a sudden, a big wave comes and cover their ponds. So this, this small pond becomes one with the ocean. That is called Prabhishtum. That a small pond becomes one with the ocean. So this individual consciousness becomes one with the cosmic consciousness. That is called Prabhishtum. Swami Pavitranda says, I attended some of his classes and I saw that only few people attended his, his class. I lamented that, you know, if you be in Calcutta or in big cities, many people would get benefit from you. <coughs> but he would not care. <laughs> He's a great teacher, as I said. He did not lecture, but he left his spiritual legacy to us through his little two books, Shat Prasangesh, Shat Prasangu. 
I you remember I gave a series of lectures on those two books, Gems from the Guardian of Saints. Those things, perhaps you can see on YouTube. Those are based on Swami Vishuddhananda's Shat Prasanga. You see, there are various kinds of speakers, I see. I say sometimes there are three kinds of speakers in this country. One, they write and then speak. Another, they have no notes, go on speaking. Another, they have notes and speak. So, I was taught, I think I showed that it is better to keep some notes. Otherwise, it was, without notes, you go on speaking, then there will be digression from the subject. That I do not like. The subject you announce to speak, you must stick to it. So many speakers do not stick to the subject. They go various places, tell stories. The subject is not there. I was taught in a different way. Swami Vishuddhananda Ji used to keep his time, most of the time, meditation, japam, spiritual discourses. He did not care too much activities, philanthropic activities, newspaper and all those things, you know. <laughs> he wanted to give them peace in the minds of the people and, and shape their characters. That, that is a difficult thing to do. He, he was the doctor of the human minds. Hmm? Comes to thou and not minister to the mind disease. In 1947, he became the vice president. Then Swami Bishwit Swami Pavitranandaji came to America in 1951. But he, after becoming vice president, he traveled various centers of India and initiated people. Wherever he stayed, every afternoon the devotees would come and he used to talk to them about God. You know, we miss that those kinds of monks. Really. If you go and sit near them, your mind will automatically go up. As I say, if you go near the fireplace, you will get the heat and comfort. These are all great swamis, which we find in this, in this uh, uh, stories of the Vedanta monks. But when I was in Ranchi, after supper, Swami was used to sit in the veranda and we used to talk about spiritual life till 10, 11 o'clock. He used to tell me many stories of Thakur, Ma, and the direct disciples. Sometimes he used to tell about his own experiences. And seldom we monks, we generally don't talk our own experiences. But Vishuddhananda Ji used to tell us so that we can get some inspiration. Oh yes, we can achieve that thing also. He mentioned that once in Jayarambati, in early in the morning, I had the vision of God. Then he told, do you know what? Once I experience the Upanishad, sometimes I repeat that Madhushuktam to you, Madhubhata Ritayate Madhuksharant Sindhava. Madhu, honey, sweetness. May the winds blow sweetly, may the rivers blow sweetly, may days and nights be sweet to us, may the dust of the earth be sweet to us. That sweetness, he experienced it. There is another mantra in Vriyadarana Kupanishad. Yam prithivi sarve shambhutanam madhu asse prithivi sarvani bhutani madhu In this world you see, it is saturated with madhu. 
and all beings, those who live in the world, they are also saturated with Madhu. Madhu means karma and karma fall. They are feeding each other. The world is moving because of the karma of human beings. And this world is moving because of the karma. People are coming and recycling. You see, what he meant that the consciousness, Brahman, which is pervaded in the universe, same consciousness pervaded in the human beings. That is Brahman. That experience, that Brahman is saturated in this universe, that Brahman is saturated on all these human beings. That is a very highest experience in Vedanta. I sometimes say, if you have experience, you keep it in yourself. If you, if you, there is a saying, Jato hai gupto, tato hai pokto. Jato hai bakto, tato hai takto. The more you preserve control, the more it will be strong. And the more you express, it will be preacher, you know, takto. It will be rejected. Spiritual experience, it is better to keep on yourself. You can talk to similar-minded people, not outsiders, or to your guru. Swami Vishuddhanandaji Pavit told Pavitranandaji that one day I was giving massage to Brahmananda and I was tired. I was thinking, my goodness, I should not feel tiredness. If I be at home, I have a family, I wish to earn money from, from the sweat of my brow, and I am serving this, this son of Sri Ramakrishna, spiritual son of Sri Ramakrishna. Immediately I get tremendous strength inside, and I was massaging. Immediately Maharaj said, enough, now you stop. But the Maharaj was all knowing, he knew what was in my mind. Shiva. This service attitude is, is very, very important to develop a spiritual life. I tell you one funny story of Swami Shuddhanandaji. Swami Niramayanandaji went to Belunma to see a person who met Swamiji. So he met Gan Maharaj. I met Gan Maharaj many times. He died in I think mid sixties. We used to go to Belun Maharaj and bow down to him. He was the disciple of Swamiji. Then he met Swami Shuddhanandaji, Swamiji's disciple. Then I said, Maharaj, I have come to Swami. I am so I have so bad luck that I was not born when Swamiji was alive. Swami Shuddhanandaji said, It is perfectly all right that you did not see Swamiji. What do you mean? Let me tell you my experience. So Shuddhanandaji told his experience. When Swamiji returned from the West, one young man came and said to Swamiji, we are very proud of you that you preached a new religion to the West. Swamiji said, what do you mean by new religion? That you know that if you bathe in the Ganges, you will not get liberation. Swamiji says, what do you mean? I bathe Ganges every day. And not only that, if I cannot bathe, I sprinkle Ganges water in my mouth and my head to purify myself. So the boy was confused and left. Then an elderly person came and asked Swamiji that, we are very proud of you that you taught eternal religion, Sanatan Dharma, to the West. What do you mean by Sanatan Dharma? Well, Sanatana Dharma says, if you die in Banaras, you will get liberation. My goodness! I tell you, without the knowledge of Brahman, there cannot be any liberation. I practice that knowledge. So this middle-aged man, elderly man, left, confused. Then Swami Shuddhanandaji was there. Swami Shuddhanandaji asked Swamiji, Swamiji, now I am confused. Please tell me what I am supposed to do. You are my guru. Swamiji said, very good. Let me tell you what you are supposed to do. Guru Sheva, you serve your guru. That will bring liberation to you. Very funny, very interesting story. <laughs>
सेवा बंदी और अधीनता यही से मिली रो गुराई सेवा सर्विस बंदी वंदना वर्शिप सेवा बंदी अवधीनता ह्यूमिलिटी दिस थ्री थिंग्स सर्विस टू आदर्स वर्शिप मेडिटेशन जापम ऑल दोज थिंग्स एंड ह्यूमिलिटी विथ दिस यू कैन अचेन गॉड इट इज अ ब्यूटिफुल सेइंग शेबा आई थिंक आई टोल्ड यू वन थिंग दैट स्वामी विवेकानंद रोड कर्म कलेवर मद्भुत चेष्टम यामी गुरु शरणम भव वैद्यम ओ मास्टर यू वर्क वेरी हार्ड आई बाउ डाउन टू यू इन प्राणार्पण जगत तरण कृंतन कुली जो न कर्म कठोर इन इन आरत्री काल सर स्वामीजी यूज टू वर्क कर्म कठोर यू वर्क वेरी हार्ड सो आई वॉज ए लिटिल कन्फ्यूज हाउ वो जो ना चीज था कुछ वर्क टू मच ही वॉज इन इज रूम इन दक्षिणेश्वर टूअर्ड दी एंड देवर जी स्केम ही गेव सम एडवाइस he did not build any temple he did not build any big big buildings he did not write any books he did not do the publication work pure fishing like me <laughs> he did not he did not build any house he did not do anything what kind of work he did leisure and i found how much work thakur did 12 years of sadhana real views in human spiritual disciplines 64 tantras vedanta tin christianity islam dokshineshwar is the laboratory of spiritual house of sri ramakrishna what kind of sadhana how much experience no avatar practice so much as tari ja ram krishna ji no hai you will find that he gained he acquired all the spiritual treasures last few years 79 1879 ramdatto manomon shurendra came you will find in our books in the, those things will come and by 84 85 that five or six years these disciples came household the disciples monastic disciples sri ramakrishna gave all the spiritual treasures to them swami ji said sometimes he used to speak 20 hours a day and develop this cancer then i realized that how much work thakur did for us he acquired the spirituality hard work six shami thakur says the six years my eyelids did not close which is unthinkable for all of us unthinkable Psh. recently we are working that book the ramakrishna pictorial you will see it would be a great pilgrimage of the soul you will see you will you will be able to the eyewitnesses of sham krishna's spiritual life you can meditate sham krishna with open eyes you will see it would be a great book we are working shiva service is very very important extremely important in vedanta literature also we find look shankar what shankar says nishkama karma chitta shuddhartham unselfish action will purify the mind upasana chitta ikagram upasana jab dhyan for what for concentration of the mind one point jnana of the mind and then kam samadhi so nishkam karma seva will purify the mind 
When the mind becomes purified, it becomes one-pointed. That is japa mind meditation. It will be one-pointed toward God. And then you will realize God. This is the we, this is the method of the spiritual life according to Vedantic tradition. <coughs> I think my time is over. I shall stop here tonight. Today, I could not finish it. Still, well, we have plenty of time. We have things to talk about these things. So we shall stop here today. Om Atma Mei Shuddhantam Jyoti Raham Viraja Bipapma Bhuyasam Antaratma me shuddhantam jyoti raham virajavi papma bhuyasam. Paramatma me shuddhantam jyoti raham virajavi papma bhuyasam. Om shanti shanti shanti. May my body become pure. May I be free from impurities and ignorance. May I realize myself as the light divine. May my mind become pure. May I be free from impurities and ignorance. May I realize myself as the light divine. May my soul become pure. May I be free from impurities and ignorance. May I realize myself as the light divine. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, 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 Benkhul.